Hello YouTube, this is Colby Forever, bringing you the Lime Drop video that many of you have been wanting for a long time. I finally got it to work reliably and to the point where I feel I am sufficiently knowledgeable to tell you guys how to do it. A lot of times people ask me to do certain videos and it's not that I don't want to do them, it's that there is missing information or things aren't clear to where I can explain them to you in a manner that makes sense. So if I don't get something done, it's not that I don't want to, it's that I usually don't have enough information to explain it in the proper way. Okay, the things that I also want to go over with this are, this is not a standalone Diablo 2 dropper. If you're looking for a Diablo 2 dropper, this is not for you because you need to have Colbot. If you're unwilling to use Colbot, then you'll need to find a different dropper entirely. Most people on my channel will already have Colbot installed, which is what we need to have. So moving forward, we all we need to do is download Lime Drop itself. All the links will be in the description below. Just click on Download Zip. Once that gets done, we're going to go to our Colbot folder. And we're going to create a folder called Lime Drop, all lowercase, all together, no space. Once you've created this folder, inside the folder we need to copy the contents of the Lime Drop that we just downloaded just a few minutes ago or a few seconds ago, whichever it may be. Copy these contents into your new Lime Drop folder. Once that's done, we can start up our d2bot.exe and we're going to create a new profile called Game Action. Game Action is spelled all together and a capital G and a capital A just to make sure that it works properly. I don't know if those capitals are necessary, but do it anyway because this way I know for sure works. You do not need to fill out the account, password, character, game info, difficulty, or realm. However, you should make sure that Battle.net is selected. Click your game path and make sure that's correct. In the parameters, I like to put no sound, but you don't need to. It's not necessary for it to work right. And the way that this is going to work is we're going to use this entry point. But before we do, there's something else I want to discuss. If you don't already use AutoMule, you're going to need a way to tell LimeDrop what type of items you have and on what mules and accounts as well as the characters. So if you're not using auto mule, which this is a very strong case for why you should use auto mule, you wouldn't have to go through this step. If you're one of the people who does not use auto mule or somebody that does things manually, this is the step you're going to need to take next. Those of you who already use auto mule, you can ignore this step. Change your entry script to d2botmulelog.dbj. The reason you're going to want to do this is fairly simple. We need to log the items into Lime Drop so that it can actually see them, so that you can actually drop them. I also suggest clicking on Visible to make sure that we know what's actually happening is supposed to be happening. We can visually inspect and see it. Hit Apply and then hit OK. Now we need to go back to our Cobot folder because we need to edit two files. The first of which is going to be in the D2BS folder in the Cobot folder under d2botmulelog.dbj. You can edit this with Notepad or Notepad++, Sublime Text, whichever one of these programs you choose to use is fine. On the line where it says wait in line timeout, if you are having queues right now on the server, you should upgrade this to a very large number so that we don't restart our queue all the time when we're trying to create a game to log our mule. As you can see, I've changed mine to 60,000. Once you're done, hit File and Save. After that, we're going to go into the Libs folder in our Colbot folder and into the MuleLogger.js or JavaScript. And then we're going to again, we're going to edit it. And this time, we're going to tell it which account, the password for that account, the realm for that account, and then finally the character or characters that you wish to log. So on this line right here, you're going to see the account name, the password, the realm, and the character name of the character that I want it to log. If you wanted it to do all characters on that account, you would just type in all. If you wanted to do multiple characters, what you would do is you would put a space, excuse me, you're going to do a comma, don't hit a space, comma, then space, then use your quotation marks, then type in the name of the second mule, just as an example, 
and another set of quotation marks. And you would do this as many times as are necessary for the amount of mules that you want to log. I'm only going to do the one, so I'm going to leave it like it is. Next, we need to go to where it says log game. This is going to be the game name and password that you want it to use for your mule logging. Make it unique so that it doesn't get that error of already existing. Log names, we're going to set that to true because if you don't know the names of things or the names of the characters, you're not going to really know. Log item level, you can put this to true or false. I prefer to leave it on true myself. Log equipped, that means that any items that are equipped on those characters will also get logged. For me, I leave this at false because I am mostly going to be recording mule accounts. So that's not really very useful to log, say, a short staff from a sorceress or a short sword and a buckler from a paladin. We don't need those things. We're never going to sell those things or have a real need to drop them. Therefore, I usually leave it as false. Log Merc, exactly the same situation. Because these are mules, in my particular case, I'm going to leave it as false. If you'd like to log your mules, of course, you would change it to true. Save screenshot. This is going to make little pictures of the items. If you want that, you can do so. In-game, this is the actual time it's going to take before it logs out and goes to the next character. So currently, I believe this is 180 seconds. If you want it to go longer or if you want to avoid realm downs, which I highly recommend you do, you would set this to a higher number. If you want it to perm the mule as it logs it, so it's going to log and then it's going to stay in the game until the mule is permed, you can change it to these two numbers here. Once you're done with that, you're just going to hit File and Save, and then you can close out of this because you no longer need it. And I'm going to change my password back to what it should be. Obviously, that's not the real password. And then we don't need this any longer. We need to go back to our d2bot.exe. And we're going to check to make sure that we have the correct entry point. We do. So you can just hit cancel or apply and okay if you did make a mistake there. And then we're going to hit start. It's going to go through the process of logging in and logging all the items for you. I may skip ahead here so that you guys don't have to see that part. All right, and as you can see, it now says that we've logged the items and that we're done. And then it's going to wait for that amount of seconds and then it's going to exit and move to the next one. Or once it reaches the end, it should just shut down entirely. So I'm not going to wait for that. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. So we're going to click on this. We're going to click Stop. And then we need to reopen our profile, and we need to change it to d2botgameaction.dbj. We need to hit Apply, and then we need to hit OK. We also need to go to the Settings button, and we need to click on Run API Server. Mine already has it because I've already turned it on once before, but yours probably will not. Make sure that you check that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to log into LimeDrop via our web browser. You could do this with Chrome or Opera or whatever it is that you like. We're going to type in localhost semicolon 8080. And what that's going to do is we're going to connect to our own computer basically on port 8080. And as you can see, that actually brings us into LimeDrop. Let me maximize this for you guys. The next thing we need to do is log in. Now you likely won't see any items when you do this, so you can kind of ignore that for now. Go over here and click on this, and then username is going to be test. The password is going to be test. And then you need to physically click login because enter doesn't work. Now the reason why we don't need to change the user and password is very simple. You're running this from a local machine. You're running this from your computer. Nothing can access this under ideal conditions, so there's not really a reason for you to change it because you're not going to connect it to the internet. You're not going to have access to this on the internet. Okay, and then once that's done, it should say, Welcome to LimeDrop, logged in as. It might say logged in as public and test, just ignore that. And then on the left hand side, you're going to need to select whichever one of these is applicable to you. As you can see, mine was expansion, softcore, and ladder. And now I can see the items that were on that particular mule. We also have a game name and a password. So let's say we want to drop Lum, Tur, and Thol. 
what we need to do is type in our game name and the password in which we're going to drop those items in. I actually took the liberty of making a game already so we don't have to wait for the queue and I'm going to show you how this works. When you click launch it should open up another window the game action window that we just set up automatically you don't need to go into d2bot.exe and launch it yourself and it should log in again automatically it should get the proper mule and it should join the proper game and then it will go to the stash there's Lum, and there's Tur, and there's Thol. And that's it. We're done. That is all you needed to do to get this to work. And you actually don't actually have to exit out of this manually. If you let it sit here, it will drop out by itself and close the window and be ready to do the next operation. All right, for now, that's all. I hope that helped out. If it did, please like and subscribe. 90 plus percent of you are not subscribed still. It's free. Help me out, help yourself out by clicking subscribe. I hope you guys stay safe and have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.